Good morning, everyone. My name is Jocelyn McGee, and I'm a second year medical student at the University of California, Davis School of Medicine in Sacramento, California. Hi, everybody. My name is McKenna Lowe, and I am a master's student studying computer science at Stanford University in California. McKenna and I are here today under the mentorship of our principal investigators, Dr. Victor Wong, UC Davis Department of Dermatology, and Dr. Priyanka Reyna of Stanford University Department of Electrical Engineering. We are presenting our current study, Pilot Network Model for Automated Vitiligo Legion Segmentation, Promises and Challenges. As we know, vitiligo is an autoimmune pigmentary disorder characterized by depigmented lesions of the skin. Despite the presence of several quantitative methods for vitiligo body surface area estimation, three of which we will discuss shortly, there is no objective and standardized method to reliably evaluate vitiligo body surface area and comparative therapeutic response. The most common existing tools for assessment are inherently subjective. The rule of nines is an assessment tool commonly used to evaluate vitiligo body surface area. This tool was originally developed to assess severity and involvement in burn patients. This rule assumes that the, that the total body surface area is made up of 9% for each of the following regions, head and neck, each arm, each leg, and each trunk quadrant, leaving 1% for genitalia. The next tool is the vitiligo area scoring index. This tool divides the body into five regions, and for each region, an investigator assigns an ordinal percentage score based on the pigmentation pattern of that region. These regional scores are then used to formulate a global assessment score of vitiligo involvement. Lastly, another assessment technique used is the vitiligo European Task Force. This combination technique incorporates several characteristics of vitiligo involvement, such as extent, which is detailed by the rule of nines, disease staging, stages zero through three, which represents zero meaning normal pigmentation, three meaning complete depigmentation, including whitening of hair follicles, and lastly, disease progression, plus one indicating rapidly progressive disease spread, zero indicating stable disease state, and negative one representing a regressive or repigmented state of disease. Given the inherently subjective context of the previous assessment tools, our project objective is to develop a machine learning network that can be used to reliably and objectively determine body surface area involvement of vitiligo. For our data set, we have 308 clinical images of vitiligo from the University of California, Davis. The data collection was supervised by Dr. Huang and the uh, manual high resolution segmentations were performed by Jesslyn. Uh, so the data set is very diverse. It has a wide range of skin tones and lesion complexity, but it is also very small. So in order to surmount this challenge, we use very heavy data augmentation where we take each image and we perform some sort of transformation on it that represents clinical variation in the clinical setting, such as differences in zoom, brightness, and orientation. So in order to measure how well our model was doing, we need a performance metric. We chose to use the Jacquard index since it is very common in segmentation tasks. We also had a variety of architectures to choose and we decided that the best for our task is a unit. Um, in order to improve performance, we also tried various modifications of the unit where we take out the left side of the U and um, substitute it with different versions of other segmentation models. Ultimately, our best performer model was an Inception ResNet V2 based unit. On average accuracies, our validation set was 72% and test set was 65%. Um, and we would expect that kind of low score based on how small our data set was. But on the left hand side, you can see uh, the output of our model. So the left column is the original natural image. The middle is uh, the ground truth overlaid on the prediction image. So these are Justin's tracings in green. And the right hand side in purple is the um, segmentation that the model outputs when given um, just the original image. So in order to see where our model was going wrong, we perform error analysis. We take uh, the 22 most poorly performing images and analyze them. They're um, defined as poorly performing if they're 
uh, score was below 65% accuracy. And we see that a lot of those images have clinically ambiguous segmentations. Um, for instance, you can see a sort of version of that in the second picture, um, second from the top in um, the image. Overall, our existing model is moderately accurate with a test accuracy of 65%. As previously mentioned, 22 images of the data set that performed the worst were those that, were, that had clinically ambiguous patterns of repigmentation. These images represent our greatest areas of improvement, and we believe that a more robust data set is needed to improve test accuracy of the network model. We have two main goals for future directions of this project. Our first goal is to improve accuracy of this model. We will do this by increasing the number of image tracings that are used to train this model. We will also retrace current images with a focus on areas of ambiguous repigmentation so that the model becomes smarter at recognizing and accurately calculating these ambiguous patterns. And lastly, we seek to improve accuracy by exploring new multi-class model architectures to account for a gradient pattern in areas of repigmentation. Lastly, our long-term goal for improving this model is to improve the utility of, utility of our technology by developing an accessible and convenient tool for clinician use at point of care for vitiligo patients. In conclusion, we would like to acknowledge once again our principal investigators, Dr. Victor Wong of UC Davis Department of Dermatology and Dr. Priyanka Reyna of Stanford University Department of Electrical Engineering. Following this presentation, please feel free to contact either McKenna or myself if you have any questions regarding this study. We would like to thank you for your time and attention. We look forward to answering your questions at the live Q&A session. Thank you.